How did you like this morning? Did you get a lot out of this morning? And I don't, I don't want to say it gets better and better because it probably doesn't get better and better, but I think what it does is it sets a, a plateau for the other speakers to shoot at. But you know, the rest of this afternoon is just amazing. We're ending with uh, Jim Cathcart, uh, and you're going to love his talk. Uh, again, four major motivational speakers. He's number two, so if you liked Rick, you will definitely like Jim. Uh, but right now, we're in for a great treat and a great education. Uh, do you consider yourself an expert in your field or an outlier? I mean, think about that. Are you the only go-to person in the minds of your clients when they have people problems? If not, you have a problem. Would you like to increase your income? Here's a key one. Would you like to increase your income to at least a quarter of a million dollars while working from home? Well, that would be a pay cut for you, Carol, but still. <laughs> Steve Sisler is the founder of the Behavioral Resource Group. He has clients in more than 18 countries and is known as an expert and innovator in the world of human behavior, attitudes, and personality types within the workplace and social spheres. We lovingly call him the Disc Motivators Whisperer, whisperer and you will see why. Uh, he's working with Zeke Lopez, our statistical guru. Zeke, uh, where are you? Zeke, raise your hand. That's Zeke back there. If you want to know anything about data, you talk to Zeke. I mean, this guy is a whiz. Uh, and they're revolutionizing the DISC and motivators assessment models through an integrated view. Right now we have what's called the DISC motivators combined report. They are working on truly a, break, a cutting edge DISC motivators integrated report. How does your DISC style and your motivators score? What does it mean? with those combined. So, I mean, just unbelievable. He's the publisher, he's the author, not publisher, of six books and the soon-to-be-released book on the four behavioral styles. When he's not working, he's eating out, although it does not look like it. He's lost 22 pounds in the last year. Uh, he walks his beagles or watches a movie with his wife, Anita, of 32 years. So, ladies and gentlemen, you're in for a treat, Steve Sisler. Thank you, Tony. Oh, it's so good to be here. Uh, okay. This is a quote from Zeke Lopez, and I love it. Uh, we live in a mental world, not a physical world. And the people we deal with, we're dealing with what's going on in their brains and how they're interpreting things and how they're seeing things, how they're seeing the world. How do people see each other? Here's something to remember. You will never see another person as they are before you see them as you are. And so we see people as we are, not as they are. They're always through our lens. In other words, if I was acting like that, it would be because I was really mad. But we don't realize they wake up mad. We don't realize they're task-oriented. We don't realize they compartmentalize emotion. We don't, re we don't realize all that. So we're thinking, they must be mad at me. No, you just might be in their way. <laughs> it's just that simple. So once we start understanding that this is not a physical world in that sense, it's an emotional, it's an, a mental world where everything's happening. All right, I want to cut to the chase um, and get to the values and then some disc in here too because I didn't want to leave you wondering about that. Um, yes, Zeke and I, and Zeke, I love you. You're a genius, and you're an amazing person, and you've got incredible character. I just got to say this publicly. He's one of the best people I've ever had the pleasure of working with. But we're working together um, with his genius in statistical analysis and getting national norms and all these different things and his immense knowledge in the axiological framework, um, bringing my behavior and attitudes senses to, to the whole thing and we're coming up with some assessments that I think will change the world to be honest with you um, because my job is not to sell an assessment it's to change a life and I think because of that it's made me 
It's given me the success that I have because I'm in the business of changing lives, not selling assessments. Um, and if you change lives with an assessment, you'll sell tons of them, <laughs> okay? So I wanna look at this with you and just give you a brief understanding of what this means. So you got that theoretical line, which is basically, in a nut, and it's a super small nutshell, but cognitive. It's, it's the need to know is really all that is. Um, we're gonna get into this deeper in a minute, but the economic is, it's a, com it's a competitive framework. The higher that goes, the more you're concerned about what you're getting out of this race, not what everybody else is getting. Uh, and the lower that goes, you know, things start changing, obviously. Um, the aesthetic is about creation, it's about creating, and it's all about unconventional ideologies and ideas and frameworks. So your mind becomes very unconventional in the way you think. Um, altruistic is really about caring. Now, I also was trying to use C words, <laughs> okay? So I was looking for words that I think would work for these. So altruistic is really about caring. Individualistic is about being characteristic and identifiable in a group. Regulatory is conventional. Um, it's about systems and systematic thinking. It's the black and white thinker. In other words, the higher you are in regulation, the more you believe there's only one way to skin a cat. And the lower that goes, the more you're like, I don't care how you skin the cat, just don't get blood on my carpet. I'll talk to you Friday. <laughs> uh, the political line is really about controlling your space, your environment, and other people, depending upon where it falls. To truly benefit from the values framework, we have to understand how it works within itself. And the values right now are set up to where you look at one line and it tells you all about that line and then we're done with that line, let's look at another line. It tells you about what that means. And we're done with that, now let's look at this line. But what would it be like to just look at a, a values assessment with seven lines from zero to 100 being in all different places and look at that and say, oh, boom. Just based upon where those lines are as a whole. Do you know when I debrief somebody on a values graph, sometimes there's two or three lines I don't even talk about because they're irrelevant. They're irrelevant based upon where the other lines are. So some lines make other lines irrelevant. And so if you take them through all the lines and follow kind of the pattern in the profile, then they might even just get confused. So it's really important that you understand how to integrate them. Okay, here's an example. Um, this is what I call the dreamer. This is a, a values profile where we're measuring the intensity of these seven different, I call them attitudes. I don't really know why I do that, but that's what I've done for 10 years. Um, but that's what I call them. And so you have some things here I wanna show you and help you understand what can be done with the profile. So I wanna start with the aesthetic, individualistic, economic combo. That's a combination. And this is what I call the deep unconventional V. So there's a V between aesthetic, individualistic, and economic. There's a V there. And because there's a V there, it means something other than what it would mean if there was a mountain. So if your aesthetic is low, your individualistic low, and your economic is high, it creates a mountain. That's something completely different. And so when you throw into the mix a low political, and then you throw into the mix a high altruistic, a low regulatory, a mid-range theoretical, like everything starts to mix up. It's like if you take particular ingredients, when you make a cake, flour, water, uh, eggs, you know, some sugar maybe, I don't know, whatever you put in there to make a cake, you're gonna mix all that and make a certain cake. You change that formula just a little bit and that ain't a good cake. Okay, so there are so many different kinds of cakes that these make. There's all these different kinds of cakes. I mean, this is like upside down pineapple cake. You know, another one might be cherry pie. Another one might be custard. 
I mean, it, it's all different, but it depends on where the lines fall, but we take all the ingredients and we put them in the bowl and mix it up, and what does that cake taste like? Or what is it like to work with that person? What is it like to eat their cake? It's bitter. I don't like that cake. I don't know why. I'll know why. You see, because this is really a cake. So it's, and, and the reason why I'm pushing this is because when you can identify people that easily and that well and that accurately, your value increases in the marketplace. And when your value increases in the marketplace, then people will pay more to hear you, to talk to you, you see, to, 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 to do that with you. I can have a company, I'll sell a disc for $360 and the company buys $300 because they want to get a disc. No, they can get that anywhere. They might even get it free if they hunt online long enough. But what are they buying? Steve on the phone for 15 minutes with one of them or all of them or whatever. That's what they want. That's what they're paying for. But guess what? There's only one Steve. So there's no competition. So I'm not competing in assessments. I'm competing in the ability to read it. And that changes the entire game. If you get very successful at identifying what is going on in a profile, then that same thing will happen to you and you won't be my competition because you're going to have your own fan club. Everybody, there, any, you watch American Idol or any of these shows, somebody comes out, another singer, oh my God, here we go again. And there's no, there, there's no, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? There's no, uh, they all have like this instant millions of fans. It's like, well, I thought they were fans to something else. Well, they're fans of this one now. Like they just change fan groups. You'll never have a loss of fans if you do something exceptionally well. If you've got something to say, a unique way of saying it, and it solves a problem, you're in demand by somebody, and that expands to a group. And what you want to do is you don't want to be uh, this, you know, coach that trying to get business, and what am I going to do this week? You want to be like, oh my God, I can't handle this. Where do I, can I give some of this work away? That's what you want. I haven't put one penny into advertising in 10 years and I get up in the morning, go to my computer and cherry pick of what I want to do. It's just like coming in, Steve, here's that guy I was telling you about. John, this is that guy I was telling you about. Meet Steve. This is what people do. Why? Because profiling people and debriefing them is an experience. You're making an experience for people that can be life changing. And that's what we're trying to do. So, um, I'm going to get to this in a minute, uh, and so I don't want you to think I'm not teaching you by moving off the slide. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna do that. Values Plus is what we're calling the, uh, the new values assessment that will be coming out. Integrates each value position into a whole. All right, let's take a look at this political base for a minute. The image there is just to get your attention, it's not accurate where the norm line is or anything. It's just showing you some things. Um, so this political base is an attraction, an emotional attraction both to control and influence, a need to control one's own destiny and the authority to make personal decisions. So people that have an excessive or a higher political mindset have to have authority that's equal to or greater than their responsibility. They have to, or they're gonna go somewhere where that'll happen. Because remember, this is the attractor. This attracts them. They're attracted to this kind of thinking, this kind of an atmosphere. They need this. Higher political value sets need control, while moderate value people like control, okay? I'd like to marry you, okay? So that might be a good relationship. I need to marry you. That's gonna be a problem. <laughs> huh? I want a wife versus I need a wife. 
If I want a wife, I'll find a good one. If I need a wife, I'll marry anyone. Want and need changes everything. And when you understand there's a line between the two and you know when it's crossed, you're a palm reader. That's what happens. And so that's what happens in these, each of these lines. Need-based attitudes make decisions more difficult as needs are always insatiable. Needs are a black hole. So all these lines have wants, likes, and needs. So there's also indifference when it's low. There's indifference, and if they're indifferent, that means something. Well, what if this one's indifferent and that one's in need and this one's in want and then that's a whole nother cake and we look to see what that looks like look at the individualistic base an attraction to both freedom and influence well that sounds a little similar to the political they both have influential pieces to them influence using control and influence using freedom and uniqueness so that that is really uh, different because there's a need to be free from sameness and a need to be distinct. If you have a higher influencer, disc I, if you have a higher influencer having a conversation with a very high need-based individualistic, they become a conversational ball hog. You see? And it's just, you could just, you could just see it. You can start, you can, you can interact with people and get so good at this that you can guess the values graph from their behavior because the values are integrated with the behavior in the disc, the attitudes. Need-based attitudes make decisions more the same thing. So indifference is more coalesced, whereas high means separation. So people that are lower in the individualistic line typically make better teammates than people that are higher. Because in their mind, you're all in their way. Of a, you're, you're, you're disallowing them to be the star of the show. Now, if you've got some other lines playing in there, like low dominance, higher altruistic, they're not going to do anything about it. They're going to gossip about you, though. Because they never come in the front door with a shotgun. That's a high D. They sneak in the back window with a jackknife. That's a high S. <laughs> that's just the way it works. So you can look at a situation and look at a team and be like, I mean, I, I, I got get stories I want to tell, but I got 36 minutes. All right, the aesthetic base. So the attraction of both creative and unconventional ideas and approaches. Out of the box ideas, out of the box approaches. Typically less practical, more problemsome in the way they do things. They take the long way home. Why? So I can see those pretty horses. See, they're going to take the long way home. So typically, if you get a very high aesthetic, 60% of the time you're going to get a low economic because it's the way it works. You see? Because when the economic's low, you don't know you're wasting gas money. You see? It, which enables you to fill that high aesthetic without any guilt. No one likes guilt. Need ba or, so influence, real indifference, real world. So the lower that line goes, the more reality-based a person is. So their feet are on the ground, so we call it real world. The higher it is, the more their head becomes in the clouds. So when you're trying to find, you know, higher aesthetic people are far more indecisive than a lower aesthetic person. And I haven't even looked at the disc yet, and I already know that. So how are they going to be indecisive? Is what I want to know, and that's the behavior piece. So there are so many different things that are attached to what these mean. The economic base, an attraction to both gains and returns on invested time, energy, and utility. In other words, if I'm putting energy, time, money, whatever into this, I better be getting something out or I'm not doing it. That's very high. When it's very low, it's more selfless. When it's very high, it's more self-ish. 
but it's really self-interest. Selfish is a behavior. Self-interest is an attitude. Okay? So selfish behavior in a child is, that's mine! You see? It's about self, but the way I went about it was a behavior that we would call selfish. Self-interest isn't always readily seen in behavior. Okay? The regulatory base, an attraction to both systems and rules on invested time, energy, and utility. In other words, higher regulatory-minded people are far more narrow in their thinking, whereas lower regulatory people, regulatory people are far more open in their thinking. Only one way to skin a cat, I don't care how you skin the cat, just get it skinned. Okay? So, I mean, these are just a few words, but, you know, we could spend hours on this line. But these are some of the things that you're going to be able to take with you. So, indifference is about being independent of the rules, and then high is dependent on the rules. Big difference. So, there are certain people that are independent of in life, and there are other people which are dependent on in life. Here's a good example. Bill Clinton is independent of in life. He's independent of the rules, as we all know. <laughs> the rules of etiquette in the Oval Office. He's independent of the rules. Now, let's say he's giving a speech and the teleprompter goes out. Will you know it? No, no. no of course not. Because he's independent of the teleprompter. He was before it came on. He was after it went off. He's always been independent of the teleprompter. He's just going through the motions. So when it breaks, he gets to give the speech he really wanted to give. <laughs> which is what he was after. Now take Barack Obama, for instance, the, the, the president right now. If his teleprompter breaks, are you going to know it? Absolutely. Because he doesn't have the roadmap anymore. So he doesn't know where to go. And this has nothing to do with smarts. It has everything to do with how the brain is wired. Barack Obama operates far more out of his, his frontal lobe than he does his limbic system. Bill Clinton operates out of the limbic system. Okay? You've heard that from Pam, freeze, fight, flight. It's all in that limbic system. It's the knee-jerk, reactive, impulsive thinking and doing out of that limbic brain, which is why we, we call it the primal brain because people that tend towards that are more animalistic. They're more like lower animals. And people that operate out of the way we call the new brain are more like higher animals. Um, and so there's a whole lot behind that. But uh, it's very interesting how it works. So when you have a person who jumps off the cliff and builds their wings on the way down and they're a low regulatory, okay, so they're low compliant and they're a low regulatory, what happens? They do whatever they want, no matter what is going on, and that's just the way they are. And so, depending upon the D, will determine the engine behind it, and all, we just keep going on, and you understand how all that works. The all to it, yes? Is there, is there a correlation between high regulatory and high C, or high regulatory and high C? Yes, there absolutely is, because in the regulation base, there's a marriage in the regulation base with the fear emotion, which is the C line. I'm afraid of doing it wrong, which is why I'm systematic in the way I do things. So typically, if you have a high regulatory line, you can guess that in the axiological report, they're systemic in their thinking a lot of times. And so I've, I've, what I, here's what's happened with me. I have, and, and this is why I'm saying that. I know Pam's disagreeing with me publicly here, which is wonderful. <laughs> but here's, here's, but here's what happens. Here's what I've seen. What I've been doing is I'm looking at this disc in these motivators and I'm imagining the axiological and then I go get it and look at it to see where I'm falling and I'm measuring it. And I'm right most of the time. I'm not right every time, but I'm right so often that I'm, I've slowed down on even using the thing. That's how right I've become just in less than a year of using it over and over and over again. Um, using Maui Gregg's analysis, and, I'm, and I, I, I'm, like, I'm like, I bet, and I look, and I'm like, oh my God. And so it's very interesting how there's definite correlations 
between all of these lines and you have certain things that you will see like often. Like there are patterns in people that are developed. And when you do enough of them, you can start locating the patterns and start. And I understand assumptions, life's lowest level of knowledge. Okay, I, I know how that works. But um, I'm finding that uh, I'm able to spot different things and it ends up being true. So uh, when you have indifference on the altruistic base, you become very self-centered. Doesn't mean you're a bad person, it just means me first, you second. When you're very high, it's you first, me last. When you're just high, it's you first, me second. So you first, me last is more of a problem if the S is high in the disc. Because you're a helper. Now you're a slave. <laughs> See what happened? Just like that with one line. You went from a helper to a slave. Just like that. And so it's very important to understand what each line means when it's high, medium, low, and then what it means against the other lines in the disc graph. So look at the theoretical base. In attraction to both discovery and why in regards to information or knowing anything. Okay? And so uh, higher theoretical values need to know why, while lower theoretical values don't. So lower the theoretical values operate on an assumption process or what we call, what I call, situational learning. Okay? So if you have a high DI, and a low, moderate to low theoretical, they cram for the exam. They don't study for the test, they cram for the test. Because the S is low, they don't have time to study. The I is high, I don't want to be in my room studying, I want to be with my girlfriend. You see? The theoretical line is lower, so I scan anyway, what's studying going to do? If I just go in there and scan, I'll be done, I'll go out and have fun with my friends, and I'm just going to go and scan right before the test and take it. And that's what they do. So you have a certain style. But here's what happens. Those people can goof off all week, Thursday night, pull out the books at midnight when they're in college, study for two hours, fall asleep, wake up, and get an A-. minus. But if I take, make them take that test three weeks later without telling them it's coming, they'll fail it. Because they didn't retain anything. They studied to pass the test. What's next? So lower theoretically driven people only study to pass the test. They typically don't study for life. Now, that doesn't mean we all don't have hobbies and interests. We do. But it's different. And so understanding these things about people, when you're looking at a graph and you've got somebody and one part of their job is teaching other people, well, you just can look at this and go, that's probably not going to work. Or I need you to do this planning thing for me. And like those people don't plan anything. So understanding these things can be really powerful. So the measure of values only has meaning when it's measured against itself within its own report. And that's the key to this. So let's look at this. So let's look at the controller for a minute here. So we've got this low aesthetic line. And we already established that the aesthetic line is unconventional thinking, creative thinking, out-of-the-box thinking, and a propensity towards what's inside of them in the world around them in sometimes very unique ways. But when this gets lower, they get more and more practical in their thinking. I don't have time to paint the office, that's ridiculous. See, that's a lower aesthetic will say that if their dominant line is high, they'll add that's ridiculous. Um, uh, uh, if, if the altruistic is high and the I is high and the S is high, they're like, you know, that's a good idea, but they'll never do it. Um, so uh, you got that low aesthetic. Now we got a high economic. So we got these low intrinsic qualities, but we've got this practical sense. This economic line is higher. It's not very high, but it's higher. So there's a sense of what am I getting out of this? There's, that's there. It's present. The individualistic is lower, so this person doesn't need the spotlight, which tells me they're pretty confident. I could guess in 75% of the time, guess the disc off of that. The odds are against that being a very low D. 
And some of you know that. I can see it on your face. So you, you, that political is super high. Now, do we have very low Ds or very high politicals? Yes, they come across my desk. Not as much as the other, but they do come across my desk, and that's known as a me-me conflict. In other words, the conflict is with themselves, not with the world around them. But everybody feels it. That's the problem with it. So we got that individualistic being lower, which means there's confidence. Now we got this high political. So the high political is I need to control my own destiny. Low altruistic, which means I even have to control your destiny. Because I don't want to help you, which would be higher altruistic. I want to control you, which is low altruistic. Why? Because lower altruistic thinkers are protecting their own space, not yours. And typically, they've been burned in the past through a situation, a circumstance, or a word. And so they tend to be extremely protective, skeptical, and distrusting of other people. So now, I'm skeptical, I'm distrusting, I got that high political, I'm a realist, so I'm real world, feet on the ground, no head in the clouds, and I'm a high political controlling you. And I'm a high regulatory, which means I believe there's only one way to skin a cat, my way, high political. High theoretical, I think you're stupid. Low, altruistic, high theoretical, you're stupid. Not, that's, you're just a little misinformed. That's higher altruistic, high theoretical, high I, because I want you to like me. But if that's all low, you're just a moron. <laughs> so how do you like this clown managing you? And they're a pure dominant. Imagine that. All D, nothing, everything else is below 40. That's adult attachment disorder. So you see what starts happening. So, you know, uh, I'll have somebody call up. Now, this is like a $500 phone call. Here's how the call goes. Steve, it's, it's Matt. How you doing, Matt? Good. Yeah, we, got, we, got, we, we want to look at Brandon. Not that Brandon. We want to look at Brandon. This actually happened in Massachusetts. I want to look at Brandon. Okay, and I've got Mike, the VP, on the, on the phone here, too. He's, it, we, got it, we got you on speaker. I said, hey, Mike, what's going on? He goes, hey, pull Brandon up, pull Brandon up. What's going on with Brandon? I said, he keeps turning the department over. Is anybody left working for him? He goes, yeah, one person. <laughs> That's how the call went, because this is what he, we had with a pure D. And he says, what can we do? I said, nothing. <laughs> what do you mean? I said, you can't fix it. Now, what am I doing? I'm saving them money. I say, if you want me to coach him, you're throwing your money in the toilet. Well, we can't just like fire the guy. I said, well, I don't know. He goes, you know, he's been here a while. He has been a problem. He does turn the department. Oh, there is only one guy left. And, I, and you want to keep him? Like, what planet are you from? And, well, what's Matt's graph? High DI, high altruistic, low economic. So he, he's moving him around, ruining everything. But he can't do it because he doesn't want to look like a jerk. Okay? I said, well, I can get him fired for you. What, what do you mean? Make it a prerequisite that I coach him. What do you think that'll do? Oh, he'll quit. You think? Yeah, absolutely. When can you come in? I'll come in Thursday. <laughs> so I go in there. Here it is. I go in there. I walk in, and there's Brandon sitting in a chair like this. I said, hi, Brandon. He goes, Let's start talking to him, this and that. No feedback. It's like talking to the wall. No feedback, this and that. We're in there for 30 minutes. I said, okay, well, well, I'll meet you. I'll see you again next week at the same time. I left. Four days later, I get a girl from the owner. He quit. <laughs> Why? He didn't want to see me again. <laughs> high political. Nobody, low C, high D, is going to tell me, low I, what to do. End of story. If they'd have fired him, that might have bit him in the rear end. So I did it, and nobody even knew it was happening. <laughs> it just happened all by itself. <laughs> Why? Because that's what these people do. Oh, God, that's great. Okay, so we got the individualist here. So think about this. Okay, 
ignore the aesthetic, it's meaningless in this graph here. The economic, meaningless. Uh, what's important is the individualistic and the regulatory. That's the most important two lines here because of where they're located. So the individualistic is extremely high, it's called very high, and the regulatory is very low. Now the regulatory is different than all the other lines because the national mean is lower. And it's just a little bit squirrely. It's actually the one line that's changing the most in the culture because people are moving towards doing what's right in their own eyes, not what you're supposed to do. So this line, in my opinion, is one of the most important lines in the entire value graph. So you got that low regulatory, which means I'm independent of, I'm not dependent on. I'm independent of your system, your thinking, your rules. I'm not dependent on them. And then you got that high individualistic, which means if I'm a penny in a jar of 5,000 pennies, I better be the red one. So that's the red penny. So the higher that individualistic line goes, the more they want to stand out as unique and different and have the freedom to do the things they want to do concerning their own environment. So lower regulatory people are independently minded, higher individualistic people are independent minded. So we get two independents. So if their theoretical line is low, they guess because they're independent of the information. So they're taking huge risks when it comes to information. They're risk takers. Now, if you look at the disc and they're a low C, they're nuts. <laughs> They'll put diesel fuel in the car and say, what do this will do? <laughs> I mean, I'm playing with you, but you know what I mean. It's like it starts exponentiating. In the behavior, it starts to change. Now, listen, these are the rules. There are exceptions, okay? But these are the rules. So you look at these graphs based upon the rules, and you look for exceptions. And it's easy to try to spot them. And if they're not there, just move on and don't keep looking. Just, all right, that's not happening, so you, you move on. But once you get it figured out, you know typically exactly what's going to happen. Now, what's wonderful about being really good at reading people's behavior, or at what I just call profiling people, um, is no matter how bad the news is, they are your friends still. No matter how bad the news is, I've had people crying because it's not going to work out or it's not working out and they're crying, but they still email me and we had to get rid of them. And they're still like friendly. They, they never forget it. I never forgot that. that once they get out of there, like, dang, that was bad. <laughs> I didn't realize it because I needed it. So I didn't realize it because when we need things, we pretend it isn't so. And so once they get out, they realize, wow, that's the best thing that ever happened to me. And what are they doing now? I got them fired and they're selling for me. <laughs> what? <laughs> I mean, that's what happens. And so it's just when you're doing this, no matter what happens, you're doing people a service by understanding how they're wired and helping them embrace who they are, not, who they are, not trying to be something they're not or do something they're not good at doing. And that's why I always say, knowing who you are is great, but knowing who you're not is even greater. And so we've got so many people, and somebody said it earlier, that management and bosses, they just give people tasks, but those tasks aren't necessarily in line with who that person is and how they're wired, how they think, or what have you, so it can be a problem. So the integration of discipline values has a prone effect on our actions. Oh, see, here we go. So minor differences can mean a lot. All right, let's look at this graph. So we got a low D. So low D people are typically hesitant, okay, because they're peaceable and what we call agreeable. So agreeable people do things they don't want to do for the sake of harmony. Okay, so if you're a very low D, very high I, like this graph here, and you're a female, and six girlfriends call and say, hey, we're going to go to the movies, you want to come? You've got nothing going on, it's Friday, you were bored, you're like, yeah! You get in the car, you go out there, you meet at the movies, they get to, you get there, they walk over, they we're going to see this movie, and it's like, you didn't want to see that movie. But you're still going to see the movie. Because you're not going to make a stink because you're agreeable. You're a low D, you're a high I, well, at least I get to be with my friends, high altruistic. 
See what happens? So this is what happens at work. Can you, can I, can you, oh, could you do me a favor? Could you do this for me? Oh, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, inside. I can't, I don't have time. I don't know if I'm going to do it. But yeah, I'll do it. It'll be great. You see, because they're agreeable. And so understanding that is, is huge. So you got that agreeable D. Then you got that high influence I, which has three fears. Number one, not being liked. Number two, failing. And number three, being misunderstood. So the high I has three distinct fears. Number one, failing, or number one, not being liked. Number two, failing. Number three, being misunderstood. So you get that going on. Then you get that very, very low S, which means they're impulsive, and they're extremely flexible. So this is a Corvette. So when you're in a Corvette and you're going down the highway 60, 70 miles an hour, and I say, oh my God, that's your exit, you can get off there without flipping the car over because you're in a Corvette. But if you're low I, high S, you're in an 18-wheeler. So if I, oh, there's your exit, you're like, bye, exit. <laughs> you can't get off there. You're going to downshift 14 times. You're going to flip that truck over or jackknife it. So you got to go to the next exit. Get off, look at your mirror, blink around 100 feet before the exit, go under the bridge, get back on, go nine miles the other direction, get off, get back on. You finally get to the restaurant, and I'm like, where were you? And they're like, I, I don't know. You see, that's the difference between the high S and the low S in a, in a nutshell. And then you got that low compliant line, which is that no fear zone. Okay, now let's look at the values. What happens here? So look at the D and the political, and there's a reason why they're both red, because they're married, in my mind. <laughs> so I don't know if that's why they made them both red. But so you got the D and the political line are both a certain way when they're both in play. When an when a, when a, when a emotion or a value is in play, it's because it's, it's high. That means it's in play. If it's low, it's not in play. It goes dormant. And then the opposite takes effect, is what happens. So you got this high political, low dominant line. And what happens is, I'm thinking, because that high political, I'm not getting the car unless I'm driving it. I own my own space. I'm behind the wheel. I'm not in the back seat. Because the altruistic is lower. It's OK where it is for some other things. But for a political that high and a low D, it could be an issue. Plus, they got that high individualistic going on with a high I, which is insecurity. So we got a lot happening here. So we got this kind of insecure, I'm not getting in the car unless I'm driving, but then you get up to the car and there's somebody behind the wheel. They're agreeable. They just get in the back seat. Donald Trump's like, I'm driving. Why? He's secure and he's dominant. So I'm, I'm driving. There's no plan B here. But this person's got plan A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. Why? They don't want to get anybody not on their side. So that's a Mimi conflict. So they're in the back seat, but they're wishing they were driving out of the value base, and they're not. So what are they going to do? Well, let's see. Low regulatory, high individualistic, independent of, not dependent on. I'm taking my own car next time. <laughs> See what happens? Low theoret lower theoretical. So what are they doing? They're limbic driven. They're limbic driven. So this person makes decisions based upon how they feel, but they rarely make decisions based upon any facts, especially if they get to discover them because they're situational learners and they're theoretical and they're low S, they don't have time to discover. So they guess. Now, if you know that much about the vice president of a company, you're gonna make some money. Because what I just said to you, I say to them. I say to the guy that owns, that's, that's his graph, that's what I say. I say everything I just said to you, you're insecure. Because like, I'm sorry, but I have to agree with you. <laughs> Is this confidential, he says? <laughs> it depends. No. Um, all right, what do we got here for time? Oh, I got 10 minutes left. All right, look at this one. Minor difference can mean success or failure. All right, uh, this graph over here on the left, this disc graph is what I call Attila the Hun. Okay, so we got the higher dominant and uh, we got the lower uh, influence. So this is a person who's very logical, not emotional. 
The S is emotional, but it's a masked emotion, so we're pulling it out of the equation. The high C, which is perfection, and a need, uh, a heightened awareness of errors and mistakes. So you got that dominant line going on that says, I got to get it done yesterday, and you got the heightened awareness of errors and mistakes, but it has to be right, so we got vacillation taking place. We got a high political line, we got a high regulatory line, we got a high theoretical line, so now we've got an obtuse thinker. And they're extremely anal because they have analysis paralysis, but the D is making them mad. So now they're going to take it out on you because they're a low I, because you're a thing, not a person. So this is the dog you're not sure you'll get away with petting. <laughs> you ever seen that dog? You're like, hey. <laughs> and the dog's just looking at you going, you got a problem? That's, that's the look of a dog's face, and it's got a little scar. So like, he's eaten somebody before. <laughs> you don't know what he's going to do. But you all know what it's like when you see a beagle. It's like, you don't hesitate. You get down there, you want to cut off an ear and put it in your pocket and feel it all day. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's a dog. But the lab pit bull mix, we got a problem. So if that person's a leader, the people work for the weekend, they don't work for that person. Plus, they're a know-it-all. High political, high theoretical, high regulatory. My way, the highway, I know you don't. Low I, you're stupid. High political, I'll show you how it's done. You see? That's Mr. T in Rocky Three. Let me take over my apartment and show you a real man. Right there. Oh, thank you. So, we got uh, seven minutes for some questions. We got any? Yes, uh, New Zealand. Steve, the, the, the pit bull, how would you get the best out of them? Pardon me? That last description, how oh. would you get the best out of that style? Okay, yeah, that's a lab pit bull mix. Oh, okay. Because Labradors without the pit bull are kind of okay dogs, but you put the pit bull in there, you're like, ah, I'm not sure about this. So the S makes you unsure. Okay, um, when working with that kind of style, it, there are other factors that come into play. What are they doing and can they do it alone? In other words, those people are all about accomplishment. Here's an example. We had an Attila the Hun working in hospice, in Marion County Hospice in Florida. Okay, so they brought me in, and they're like, so what do you think? And I'm like, who's this girl? And is she even married? That's what I said. <laughs> this is what the guy said. She's not married, but she's got a big dog. <laughs> it's a pit bull. <laughs> so anyway, I met with her, very frank, very, you know, uh, adult attachment disorder, meaning talking and being emotional with people is like washing your hair with a hat on. It's like, ugh. So, Anyway, here's what we did. She, we found out what are her skills, what's she really good at? Well, she's really good, you know, she's really good at the computer. You know, will you have her do the Excel stuff, yada, yada, yada. I said, now, do you have room for her to be working on that solely? Is there a place? Yeah. So she worked, they made her work from home on the computer. She's in heaven and so were they. Just like that. We just pulled her out of that equation, but kept her job and have her doing something she can appreciate because she didn't really like it either. But when she went to school and got trained, she thought she would, but then she ended up not liking it. But she didn't want to leave because it was hard to get a job, especially for her. So, um, you know, people like that do multiple interviews a lot of times. So the point I'm making is we just looked at circumstances and situations and then come up with this, something to do and we did it. So it worked. So you got to just work through it and see what's going on and look at all the pieces. Uh, five minutes left. Anybody else? Any other questions? Okay, right here in the front row, Jeff. Is it Jeff? Yeah, I was um, uh, making note of the, the, the words when you went through each one, and I, I just wanted to get your feedback on some other adjectives that have you described. Mm -hmm. um, so the aesthetic, pursuit of perfection, you talked about unconventional and creative, but is there, a, is there a sense of perfection that they're trying to pursue? And then on regulatory, you say systems and rules, but what about tradition? And uh, yeah, those two. Yeah, I mean, again, I'm trying to fit the talk into an hour. Um, so yeah, uh, regulation is a traditional thinker, especially if it's accompanied with an S, and then we've got a very traditional thinker, typically. 
So traditional thinker meaning following things that have been long established. That's traditional, long established things, reliability, so forth. That's why. Um, so they would like a brand new rule, a brand new system, and a brand new rule may not as be as attractive. Not as attractive as, as a traditional. Yes, to okay. a traditional S, because S's don't like change. Right. Okay. So it, you see what happens? It gets it gets harder. Now, if the S was a ten, and the D is high and uh, they're high I, and you're like, oh, dude, we, you, I, we got this new stuff coming. You're going to love it. They don't want to deny what you're saying is being true, so that person will try it. They'll try to change it. That's right, because there's other things going on, because here's something I've noticed in the years I've been doing this. The behaviors trump the values in most cases. The behaviors trump the values. So you could have a value of... Uh, Let's say your, uh, uh, your low regulatory, or the traditional line, I believe, on TTI's profile, you're low on that line. So you're very open-minded, you're depend independent of, not dependent on, and you're high individualistic, so you want to be unique, okay? So the regulatory line and the C and DISC are not married, they fight one another. So what happens is, if that, uh, I mean, when the regulatory is low. When the regulatory is high and the C is high, they work together. When they're opposite, they, they repel one another. But the C wins. So this is the person who wants to buy a Hummer but comes home with a minivan. Because the C wouldn't let him do it because it was too risky. Because the C is above 80. So they're not going to do that. But they want to because they're independent of all the other cars on the road and there's less of those and they stand out and that kind of a thing. And if they're a D, what, you see what happens? But the behavior trumps the value in most cases I have seen. Anyway, that's all the time we got. Thank you very much. It was great. And, uh, thank you. How many of you got some new insight on the motivators? Anybody? Uh, does he know his stuff? A I mean, just absolutely incredible and delivers it in a hilarious way, doesn't he? Quite good. So Steve, thank you very much. Very, very good.